Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation. I apologize if I made this problem before. It kind of looks familiar. I hope I haven't. And if you do know, please let us know because I'm hoping that this is going to be different even in, in that case. So we have this equation 2 to the power x plus 1 equals 3 to the power x. And you're probably saying, uh oh, I already know the solution. It's too easy, right? Yes, obviously, if you've done some equations, you should probably know to guess and check. And we can always do that. But the million dollar question is, are there any other solutions? How many solutions are there and how do you find them all, right? You kind of need to find other solutions if they exist or prove that there are no other solutions besides the one you found. What am I talking about? So looking at the obvious, obvious solution, what do you think? Well, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, right? So that means x equals 1 is a solution. But again, is that the only solution? And how do we go about it? So let's go ahead and take a look. First, whenever you get an equation, and that's kind of non-standard, this is exponential, but we do have different bases on different sides. So that kind of makes it a little harder. So that's why we use guess and check, and which was easy. For example, if they gave us this, we couldn't guess easily. We couldn't guess at all. I mean, there's no way, right? There are numerical methods. Maybe calculators can do it, but you can't do it algebraically or uh, what is it called? Uh, synthetically, maybe? I forgot the name. Analytically, maybe. So, x equals 1 works, yes. One of the things that you should check for these kinds of equations is one of the functions increasing. Because if you have an increasing function and a decreasing function, they can only intersect at a single point. What does increasing mean? It means that as x values increase, y values increase. And you can tell by looking at the derivative, right? The first derivative tells you whether a function is increasing because if it's increasing, then the tangent lines are always going to have a positive slope. And the slope of the tangent line is the first derivative at that point. So that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, here's a quick rundown on, you know, two minutes of calculus for you. Anyways, uh, I have a lot of videos on calculus, so you go ahead and uh, check them out. I also have another channel that focuses on complex numbers. And by the way, this is the second video for today because today is Thursday. Okay, I mean, at the time of recording, it's also Tuesday. I mean, Thursday because I'm recording it after midnight, which is kind of crazy. Anyways, so x equals 1 is a solution. How do we prove there are no other solutions? So 2 to the x is increasing, isn't it? And how can you tell if b to the x is increasing or decreasing, look at b. b can be between 0 and 1 or greater than 1. You don't want b to be 1 because that's not interesting. 1 to the x is always 1. It's a horizontal line, of course. It's neither increasing nor decreasing. But if b is greater than 1, then you have an increasing function. If b is less than 1, of course, it has to be greater than 0. Otherwise, you're going to have to deal with lots of complexities and the complex world. It's decreasing. So increasing, decreasing, okay? But the problem is this is increasing, so this is increasing, and that's increasing. How do you compare two functions that are both increasing? Will they intersect at a single point? Well, not necessarily, because think about it. Suppose you had a curve and this, they're both increasing, but they intersect at two points, right? Can they intersect at two, more than two points? Yeah, I mean, depends on the curve. Depends on how, obviously, it's kind of hard to find a function that curves like this, but if you do know, let us know because I'm curious. So, as is, this function or this equation is not that good. So, we kind of need to put it in a nicer form, and here's what we're going to do to do it. We're going to divide by the largest exponent, or the base, I mean. In this case, uh, this is 1, by the way, so you could also write this as 2 to the x plus 1 to the x equals 3 to the x, which motivates the solution that x equals 1 because you can tell, right, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 right away. Yeah? And if you had something like this, which I probably did a video on, I don't know, a long time ago. Okay. Uh, suppose you have something like this. You could hopefully tell that x equals 2 works because it's a Pythagorean theorem, right? Cool. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide everything by 3 to the power x. And we can split, and we can kind of write it like, oops, I wasn't supposed to put an equal sign. All right, 
I got it wrong. 2 to the x over 3 to the x plus 1 over 3 to the x. What I did here was used a common um, base. Why didn't I do it that way? Uh, well, I should probably do it that way too. So I should use it for all of these. And that's right. The right hand side is 1. Great. What does this tell you? Well, we know that x equals 1 is a solution, right? Because 2 thirds plus 1 third is 1. One more time, we confirm. But not only that, 2 thirds is between 0 and 1, and 1 third is between 0 and 1. So that's just awesome, right? You know what that means? These functions are decreasing, both. And their sum is also going to be decreasing because the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives, and if you add two negative numbers, you get a negative number. You see? It's easy to prove. But on the right-hand side, we have a horizontal line. Uh-oh. A decreasing function, however that is, intersected by a horizontal line. That can only happen once. And guess what? x equals 1 happens to be the only, only, only solution in the real world. But here's a good question. Are there any complex solutions besides x equals 1? Because 1 is also a complex number, right? Now, let's take a look at what Wolfram Alpha gives us. It gives us a graph of these two functions, 2 to the x plus 1 and 3 to the power x. As you can see, first, 2 to the x plus 1 starts higher because of the addition of 1. It's a sh vertical shift. But then 3 to the x catches up because it's a bigger base. And then they intersect at x equals 1. And then 3 to the x is just gone crazy. Make sense? Obviously, the powers of 3 are going to be much, much faster than they're going to grow faster than the powers of 2. Even if you add 1, that's kind of negligible. Right? Make sense? So definitely by using this type of idea, you can come up with lots of lots of problems. Think about it. One of the things that I really like is writing problems. And this is definitely, a, I think, a well-known problem. I've probably seen it in a book or something. But you can easily make up a problem like 5 to the x plus 4 to the x equals 9 to the x. You know the solution. But you also know the uh, answer. I mean, the answer and the solution method. I, that's what I meant. So try to come up with problems like this. Or maybe you can come up with something even better than that. I don't know why I wrote the two last. But this would be 9 to the power x. Make sense? Think about it and you'll hopefully find a lot of good ideas. And let us know. If you have any suggestions, feel free to comment. If you have any questions, feel free to comment all the time. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check A plus B I. And bye-bye.